everybody to the Making Awesome Podcast. This is episode 181. We're going to be talking all about networking. And for those who I have clearly confused, it is not the IT networking. I don't know anything about that, really. <laughs> so we're going to go with, you know, the networking that helps you grow your business, the one that would line up with the other topics of this podcast, that networking. Uh, so thank you all that are showing up here live. Of course, we do these pretty much every single weekend live on YouTube. If you are tuning in, thanks for being here. Leave a like, get subscribed, and all of those things that help the channel grow. We got some awesome people here hanging out as well. We got Mike from Never Let the Machines Win, Andreas Grundlers here, Mad Cat USA, Max H, who is celebrating... The, is it Max? Yes, Max H, who's celebrating their 47th wedding anniversary, so happy anniversary. We got Geek Toy Box Dom is here, saying so he doesn't much care for the 30-minute warnings, usually forgets to tune in at the start. Look, man, it is what it is, right? I, I, I gotta, you know do the advertising stuff let people know we're gonna be at the places we're gonna be at the times we're gonna be at them um david connor shover is here as well who else we got steve builds is here who of course his latest stream is linked in the in the description and as soon as we're done we're gonna be raiding into steve's stream so that we can all uh say hi to steve collectively and then uh you know check out what he's working on this is something with a rook it looked like, which was pretty awesome. So, networking. Oh, man, right? The, the old adage of it's not about what you know, it's who you know. That is so true. It's absolutely true that it is all about who you know, right? I mean, literally just earlier, um, oh, yesterday, I ran into an issue where... Uh, my lawnmower got the Bluetooth edition for its starter, which basically means it sheared the gear off the starter. Great times. Thankfully, it's a couple of bolts and got that taken care of. And I had a spare because remember, kids, keeping spare parts in hand. And I made a bit of a quip about how I could 3D print parts for this and fix it myself, but I'm not going to give bad advice because we're responsible and we don't give irresponsible advice, very clearly calling out Loyal Moses because he is giving people advice that could be deadly. Um, and then someone commented about metal. I'm like, yeah, we, we could use a half million dollar metal printer to reprint everything out of titanium, take off the coils, put the coils on this new one, and it would actually work. And that is probably the safest way to do it. We could do it with plastic, and I actually have an interesting way to do it. But I'm not going to, because a new starter is like $75, and I'm not going to bother trying to fix something. And uh, that was when they started talking about metal porosity. And so I tagged Inconel, SJ. SJ is probably one of, if not the foremost expert on metal additive manufacturing out there that I know of. And when it comes to metal porosity, they are much smarter than me. So I utilized the fact that I knew the right people and brought them in. Now, will they respond? I don't know. Uh, they're pretty busy these days. So, you know, Nothing wrong with that. But yeah, as, never, as Mike says, you can just keep spare parts, which is exactly what I did. Hilariously, I thought the old starter was dead, so I bought a new starter. That new starter I bought June 10th of 2023. It is March... Yesterday was March 30th of 2024, and it sheared the top of it off. So um, don't buy generic starters, right? I'm going to go I'm gonna put the OEM one back on and buy a spare OEM one. Uh, apparently, whatever grade of Chinesium was used to produce it is not quality. Uh, what did occur, for those that are wondering, the starter popped up, started the motor, but it didn't fall back down. And the fact that it didn't fall back down meant it got sheared off. Um, Pretty easy fix, but just a matter of uh, knowing and knowing that sound. So, hey, that's life. But networking is really about kind of knowing the right people. And I probably should have bothered Pooch for this one because Pooch would, would likely be a great networker. Pooch is one of the few people that I know of that are in this industry that are like crazy extroverted. Pooch is a massive extrovert. Um, 
and he's very good at talking to people. And so naturally, Pooch has a pretty stacked black book. And when you start to get into a professional atmosphere, right, where you have to do projects for people, having one of those black books that's got the right people for the right thing is incredibly valuable, right? If you can't do something, having a buddy or a friend or an expert or whomever that can take over or at least advise you properly on how to do things is absolutely critical to the success of something like this, right? If someone comes in and asks me for metal 3D printing, we don't have metal additive here at the shop. It's just not something that we do. But I got a buddy locally who does. And in fact, their ISO 13845 or 485, I always forget which one it is. It's medical stuff. They're, they're certified for medical stuff. And uh, that's great. But then I just transfer it over to them. I say, hey, this is my buddy. This is what they do. Go ahead and work with them. And sometimes he's like, dude, don't send your customers to me. Just like take their money. I'll give you wholesale pricing. I'm like, yeah, but I'd rather you make more money on this. He's like, I know, but if you do all the, if you do all the customer work and you just send me the STL file, you're my customer. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. I, 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 I can't exactly deny that one, but having people to help out where you are deficient and being able to call on those people, that is really what networking basically is. And networking is a massive challenge for introverts, right? Because those social interactions suck. They hurt. It's dominated by introverts. But with the right strategies, we can kind of turn those natural qualities that you might have into strengths rather than just looking at the weaknesses of, I just hate humans. So, you know. That's always a fun one. Uh, Steve says my connection. Steve, we have been over this so many times. My internet sucks and there is nothing that I can do about it. This is this is my life. This is my life of living uh, out in the boonies with Spectrum Internet. And if you guys are upset that this stream continues to have problems, you should tweet at Spectrum and let them know that uh, once again, their internet sucks. Uh, let's see. Let's see how bad our latency is right now. Uh, let's see. Because now I'm curious. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, latency to Google's IP is running about 185 milliseconds. That's cool. Gotta love that. Yeah, there's really nothing I can do about that. My internet is an introvert. Um. And unfortunately, if we can't get this one resolved, we will have to end the stream because uh, I'm seeing like 11% of my packets being dropped here. So nothing I can do about it. We're going to try to work through it. But yeah, we're we're dropping a fair bit of packets here. So those of you that want to enjoy me calling Spectrum, come over to our Discord, $10 tier higher, higher. That's what we're going to be doing right after this stream ends because once again my internet oh yeah yeah we're losing uh uh do we reset everything i could try to reset everything i, I it resets once every 48 hours on nah whatever we're just gonna send it hopefully it works all right for you guys i'm sorry welcome to my problems of only having a singular internet service provider uh in an area where they just don't care about their customers so Great times. Yeah, no, I'm losing about one every 25th. I'm going to have to reset everything. Um, This is going to upset me. All right, guys, give me just a few minutes. I will be back, and we're going to look at just restarting this. I'm going to have to completely redo my internet. Uh, right now, I'm going to just reset everything and hope that it works. It might kill the stream. Um... We're going to find out, but right now, yeah, I'm just checking to make sure because I, I don't think it's going to work and we're like at one third of the viewers we normally have. So I know it's directly related to this. So let me just take a screenshot of our packet loss here uh, and then we can we can move on. Give me just a second. All right. 
All right, guys. Uh, well, actually, it looks like it's stabilizing. All right. Well, if it's going to stay the way that it is. Nope. There it goes. It died again. One third could be related to it being Easter morning. That's not my problem. Um, packet loss. That, that, that's not my problem. I don't I don't pay for packet loss. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the network and see if it fixes everything. I will be back in just a few minutes. Sorry, guys. I'm going to leave the stream rolling just in case. Um, theoretically, YouTube should let us pick back up where we start, where we, where we left off. But yeah, I'm going to give this a shot and hopefully we'll be right back. Give me just a second. All right, we should be back. I'm fairly certain we're back now. We're still dropping packets like crazy, so unfortunately, it's not a me problem. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, Biz life sometimes. Let me refresh on my side for YouTube and just make sure that it is functioning the way I'm expecting. Okay, we are back. Wonderful. Yeah, if you guys don't see it back yet, just refresh the stream. Unfortunately, my internet still sucks. There is nothing that I can do about it. Um, Geek Toy Box was talking about that I don't have a business connection. I don't have a business connection. They offer no SLAs for businesses, so I'm not going to pay the premium to have a business account if they're not going to offer me anything better other than they'll come out in 96 hours versus whenever the hell they feel like it. It's not worth the um, over triple the price for my internet every month. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately, guys, this is the way that it is going to be for me. There is nothing that I can do about it. I'm sorry if you have a problem with this. Go ahead and tweet out at Spectrum. Spectrum Service, I'm sure, is one of them. Um, because once again, we have massive problems with Spectrum. So, yep. Don't know what to tell you guys. We're just going to keep rolling through. I understand things are going to have problems, uh, but there's not much I can physically do about it. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, let me just roll in. Let me just roll through. Um, I'm going to likely end up having to look away from chat because people, people talking about the internet problem is going to distract me from the subject. There's nothing that I can physically do about it. I just reset my router, my modem, everything. I am hardwired directly into it, so there is quite literally nothing that I can do about it. Um, this is all my ISP. If this bothers you as much as it bothers me, go ahead and tweet at them and uh, tag me in it as well because this is this is business for me and this is how I try to make money and they're not letting me do it. So, gotta love it when somebody else controls your ability to make income. Anyways, let's get back into uh, Starlink. Yeah, for, five, for $600 plus, what, $150 a month? Yeah. That's, uh, that doesn't work. It's, it's too much money. Um, I don't have that kind of income to, uh, support Starlink. So, and have Starlink as a backup, which we could do. Our, our, our mode, our router supports failover. Uh, the problem is it's very expensive as a failover. So, um, yeah, I wish we had fiber. We don't. Fiber is not offered in my area. So that is life, unfortunately. All right. So introverts dealing with, and in fact, I think this is going to be one of those where we upload the raw recording. So let's do this. Well, I don't know. Oh, well, I'm going to upload this. All right. So this is how we sometimes do it. So for those that listen audio only, um, you guys are delayed a little bit, right? There's one week delay if you're listening audio only. Um, I would traditionally upload the good part of this, but whatever, we'll upload whatever YouTube had. It is what it is. Anyways, let's look at leveraging listening skills, right? Cause if you're an introvert, you might be pretty good at listening, right? Traditionally, if you don't like talking, you don't like being the center of attention, then you're probably pretty good at listening, right? You can use this advantage that extroverts don't have, right? Extroverts 
uh, sometimes have a tendency to be me, 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 me. Whereas introverts are like, please let it not be me. Please let it not be me. Please let it not be me. And because of that, you can focus on what other people are saying and be able to ask questions that actually matter, right? Showing interest in what others actually have to say. That is a technique, a very interesting technique as well, that it is something that we don't see too much out of people that talk a lot. Hi, I talk a lot. I do my best to listen, but I talk a lot. Especially when I'm in new scenarios, I tend to be more introverted. When I'm here, right, on camera, I have to talk a lot because otherwise there's a lot of silence and that doesn't work very well for this kind of thing. So we work with what we got. Um, but if you leverage your listening skills and you ask those thoughtful questions that will actually show that you actually care, you have a much higher chance of succeeding when it comes to, you know, having a conversation and building friendship. Those of you that know how to do active or attentive listening, you'll be more inclined to connect with people simply because they feel heard and understood. See, when people are out talking with others, everybody has a fear associated with this. Some people are okay with it where they've gotten through this, but being out in a group of people can make pretty much some extent a little bit nervous. And that nervousness is something that doesn't easily go away, but it does if you feel as though when you are talking, you feel heard. So if you don't like to talk, make sure the person that is talking actually feels heard. Because if they don't feel heard, why would they talk to you? Right? Part of this deal is that it has to be a two-way street. If it's not a two-way street, then it doesn't work. So if they are talking and you are providing active listening and attentive listening. But then when you make a, a, a statement every now and then and they just don't pay any attention to you, that might mean that they're not as, you know, associated as you'd like to be. And, well, you have a couple of things you can do there. You can kind of decide to continue on and let them kind of just talk about themselves and move on with your life, or you can decide to walk away and let them know. Now, for introverts, sometimes we're not the best at picking up on those social cues of, hey, this conversation is over. Um, Okay, Astro Lemonade says, I'm handling the same topics again and again. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but his attention span can only do so much. Okay, dude, I don't know what to tell you. We have we looked, we have never done, ever, we have never done a topic on networking. We have never done a podcast episode on networking. I was moving in there, and see, I got, I got distracted by a comment. Uh, we have never done a topic on, on, on networking. We did the power of community which is working with others. Networking is a very, very different thing, and it is one of the easiest ways to grow your business. Um, next week, we're going to talk about hiring, which is one I know that we've done a few times, uh, but it does serve for us to talk about it every now and then. So if you don't like the fact that we do talk about the same things from time to time, I'm sorry. That's how this goes. Um, when you do a weekly podcast and you do it on your own, Coming up with topics can be difficult. If you do want to help coming up with those topics, I recommend you join our Discord. Otherwise, I'm sorry. This is how life goes for me. Um, I am incredibly busy. And sometimes I have to think of ones that, uh, you know, maybe I don't think we've ever done. I don't think we've ever done one about networking. Anyways, going to move through this. So if you're not the best at holding a conversation... One of the great ways to do this is to get a conversation starter. But conversation starters can be difficult, right? Just like I have issues sometimes coming up with topics for podcasts, you might have issues coming up with conversation starters. And if you can have some ready, right? Even if you have to write them down and, you know, walk away a little bit, look at them so that you can go in to a conversation with some sort of question to ask, a way to spark a conversation, that would be absolutely ideal. Especially for those of you that really don't like talking in larger groups. 
some of it can be where it's a one-on-one, right? And when you're going to networking events, I want, I hate networking events. I want to be very clear. I do not like them. They absolutely serve those who are incredibly comfortable around people just to come up to me all the time and talk to me. It will make me, ang- it will make me anxious and give me anxiety. Now, of course, there is always the liquid courage. And it's funny because pretty much every networking event that we've ever gone to has booze. And it's normally at least they give you drink tickets, so you get drinks for free if it's not an open bar scenario. And so it's always made me wonder, are extroverted people just introverted people that have had a few drinks, or are they always like this? Because I I could never understand what it's like, like being married to someone or being in a relationship with someone who's like crazy extroverted, right? I don't know. I guess a lot of you might think that I'm extroverted, and I'm not. I'm very much not. I can be when I need to, right? I can go up and talk to people when it's absolutely required. But, you know, there's not much that I like when it comes to going up into a bunch of people and talking. Uh, Those of you that were at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Fester actually watched the stream where we shaved my head. I had no idea that I was going to be on the mic on my own. I had no idea. And so I was anxious because at the last moment, I I was told, hey, you're doing this on your own. I'm like, excuse me, what? I thought Joel was going to be the MC for this and I didn't have to talk too much. But they gave me a microphone and I had to start talking. I very quickly realized I wasn't prepared for that, uh, which made all the anxiety that I had that day of doing all that real in an instant to me. And I had to keep my cool. So that was a fun one. But being able to have those conversation starters um, conversation away from someone just talking about what they do and how they do it to a conversation that actually matters to you and those around you, right? So I keep getting distracted. I'm I'm sorry. All right. I'm 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 turning off comments. I'm not going to watch them. I'm sorry guys. I can't do it. I keep getting distracted by the comments. There's I can't change the internet. I'm sorry. And, and if, if, if I keep, you know what, uh, I think, I think we're going to kill the stream. I think I'm done for today. I, I'm, I'm so frustrated by this. Um, there's literally nothing that I can do about this. I'm sorry that it is bothering you. I am trying to do what I can to work through it, but every single, God bless. I, I'm, I, I'm going to try not looking at the comments, but it means that I literally have to do this. Ah! All right, fine. I'm going to work through it. Just going to work through it. Networking is also about choosing. And I have notes, right? So I have my notes of what I want to talk about. And uh, if I keep getting distracted, I can't talk about them. Ah, son of a bitch. All right. So big networking events. If you're introverted, you're not going to go to them anyways. So choose smaller events, right? Choose events where you have some knowledge base as to what you're going to. Uh, For me, there was an event uh, yesterday, not yesterday, on Thursday, Friday at Shining 3D. Shining 3D is a 3D scanning company. They produce 3D scanners. They have two offices in the United States. One is in California. The other one is like 30 minutes from me here in Tampa. They had an open house where we could just go play with, you know, 40,000 plus dollar metrology grade 3D scanners, which was super cool. And I'm hoping that we will get to be filming with them. But the guy that I was working with, his name is Josh. Um, he said, Hey, just come on Friday. Friday is going to be the day that you want to be here. Anyways, that's when you get to actually trial the equipment and it's going to be a much more intimate environment, which as soon as someone says like for, for an event that it's going to be a more intimate environment, count me in. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, right? Oh, intimacy. That's not what it really means. It means there's going to be less people and less people means I can have more meaningful conversations with people that I actually want to have conversations with. Because, you know, if you're in a big group of people, you're not going to get to meet everybody. And that might make you nervous. And it might make you nervous that you don't know who these people are or what their value is or how they matter to you. And I was in a room with... What is this guy? He's one of the engin- he's one of the sales engineers for Worth Additive. Um, Worth Additive, their 3D scanning guy, his name is Grant. 
uh, my name is Grant, and it was not Grant that was there, but it was funny to hear him talking about Grant. I'm like, oh yeah, I know Grant. I'm also Grant, and I'm into 3D scanning, but I don't have a big company that, that just gives me scanners. So, you know, Grant's pretty awesome. He's like, yeah, I said, I know Grant's pretty awesome. It, it, it was a funny one. But yeah, that individual and I, we had, we had a couple of really good talks because it was a much more small environment. There was maybe like 12 of us. That we're just kind of hanging out in a 1,500 square foot room, which is plenty of like working space. Um, that had to be, yeah, probably 1,500 square feet is probably about right. Maybe a little bit smaller than that. And, uh, you know, we were able to have those kind of smaller talks of just like, hey, let's just go over here and talk quietly. Or, you know, let's talk where we know others can hear us and let's see if we can get them involved. And we had some really interesting talks about blue laser lines and how Shiny 3D is using the, their trio, which has a couple of different ways that it projects laser lines and how the deep laser line works really well for getting it. It's a single line. It's designed for deep holes, but the pattern, the crosshatch pattern doesn't. We had a good conversation about that. And we kind of came up with, we, we don't actually understand why. And Shining 3D won't tell us because that's part of some of the sauce that they use to make their scanners as good as they are for the price they are. Those of you who might know some of their products, you might know the Einstar. That is by Shining 3D. Um, but, and it's generally speaking, um, you know, I, uh, generally speaking, I think it's one of the best scanners for the money. So, you know, if, if you're looking to uh, to do it, uh, scanning, if you want to get into scanning, that's a pretty good scanner for the money. They don't pay me to say that yet. Um, So, yeah. Anyways. All right. I just checked chat again, and that was a mistake. We're, we're just, we're not going to check chat. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I. I I know, I know everybody hates this. I hate this too, but I do this every single weekend. I have to do it or it's going to upset me because it throws off my day. As it is, I'm going to have to make a call to Spectrum as soon as we're done. And I don't like making those phone calls because it's basically like, look, I need you to fix this. This is how I make money. I can't work a day job. I am like, I'm not physically able to work a day job. So I, I need you to do the one thing that allows me to make money. Please and thank you. The thing that I pay you every month an exorbitant amount of money for. Please, please, you know, do your damn jobs. I don't care that it's Easter Sunday. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's Super Bowl Sunday, right? I pay for, I pay for things. I don't pay for lack of quality. <sighs> I should probably clip that. I don't know. I don't know anymore. So the, the small events are valuable, right? Don't start off by saying, ooh, I want to learn networking by going to these like BNI groups, these business networking, interactive, whatever. Like if there is a group that says it's for business, uh, like business networking and you're in the 3D printing business, probably just avoid it. I uh, look, I, I, I've tried. Maybe you guys would have better luck than I would. But traditionally speaking, these networking groups really don't serve any networking purposes. What they actually are, are for people that want to sell their services to sell their services to other people. It's not networking where you try to help each other bring in customers. It's here's what I can do. You should buy my services. It's like, I don't want to be here anymore. This is not what this is about. It is about, you know, actually helping other businesses and working together, not just getting help for yourself and then walking away. So. Be cautious of those kind of business networking things. I've never had luck. Maybe you will, but I would avoid them personally. And same goes with Chamber of Commerce, right? I'm not a part of any of our local chambers because I, I used to be. And not only was it a fundamental waste of money, it was a fundamental waste of my time. The problem that we deal with here in the 3D printing industry is that not a lot of people understand what it is that we all actually do. They'll know what 3D printing is, but they don't have any idea of how it works. And specifically, they don't have an idea of why there is value associated with it. And that's why these networking groups kind of suck, because they're all going to ask you the same questions. What is it? How does it work? And effective should care? Then they're probably not your customers. And it's actually why we started our YouTube channel to begin with, because I ran into this problem. Oh, you want to know why you should care? Here's my YouTube channel. Go watch it.
right? Go see what this industry is about. Go see what is there. We utilize the content as a way to do the, the hard work, which is the education for us, right? I, literally, and Amber will attest to this. If Amber is in the chat, she will attest to this. Let me see if Amber's, I assume Amber's there. But if Amber is in the chat, she will attest to the fact that pretty much at least once a week, we get a phone call about someone looking for 2D printing, whether it's signs, business cards. I had someone drive all the way out here and then call me to say, hey, it looks like I drove out to a house. I'm looking to get some signs printed. I said, we do 3D printing, not 2D printing. And literally our name is 3D Musketeers. I want to be real clear. Like it, it's, it, 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 this side, it's, it's right there. But even further, it's in our description on Google. It's like right there. And, uh, yeah, th there, there's literally nothing that I could do to make it more clear for people, but people just don't listen and they don't read. So, be cautious of those bigger events because you're going to deal with a lot of people that don't understand it. Now, if you're going to a 3D printing specific event, right, whether it's a rapid TCT, 3D printing industry awards, maybe you're going to a rep rap fest like the Rocky Mountain rep rap fest, which is coming up. We will be there. By the way, if you want to go and meet us at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, we will be there both days. Let's come over and say hi to us if that is your thing. And those events, while Rumor is going to be a big event, like quite literally more than double what it was last year, right? It is a great place to meet other like-minded people. But understand, those people might not be your customers. What they might be are great resources for you to grow your business, right? Let's say all you do is FDM, right? All, you got, you maybe you got a Prusa, you got some bamboos, whatever it might be. You've got some stuff, right? Um, you've got some basic printers. That is is where you might find people that have bigger machines. Maybe find someone with an HP MJF printer. Maybe you've got, uh, you know, someone that does metal printing, someone that can do whatever, 3D scanning, right? And they're all relatively close to you, where you can now add on to what you do as a business, be able to outsource it, make a little bit, you know, you take a little bit off the top and everyone gets happy, but that's where business starts to play, where your network becomes that group of larger people, right? That's kind of what networking is about. And you can learn about these people, do your due diligence on them before you go to these events by utilizing the online platforms. The online platforms like, you know, where you can go to see who the exhibitors are, will give you the company name. Sometimes there's a description. If you're lucky, there might even be a link to their website. and You don't have to do a ton of extra research. But by knowing the people that you're going to be seeing, you can make sure that you are prepared with your, uh, your, your topics to go with. And honestly, you can just go to have fun. We've found that oftentimes when I approach something without the idea that I need this for business and we just do it to hang out and have fun, we get way more done. Because when you don't set unrealistic expectations for yourself that I must be about business, networking is like 85% just hanging out and getting to meet people. Honestly, it might even be 95%. And then there's a very small portion of it that is the, hey, let's actually talk business, right? When we got sponsored for the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest, that occurred at like two o'clock in the morning after an event, just talking. There was no, I, there, there was absolutely no like set reasons that we were, we were just there hanging out, having a good time. And then it just happened to come to fruition. I'm like, all right, what the hell? Let's go with it. Right. And that idea of rolling with the punches and being able to just kind of flow through a conversation wherever it takes you will be more valuable to you than going up to company saying, hey, sponsor me. Hey, sponsor me. Hey, sponsor me. That doesn't work. And if you do get a sponsorship that way, it might not be one that you're all that happy with. Right. That's, of course, for you content creators out there that are looking to grow your content. Right. So 
those realistic goals of, I'm just going to go to meet people. I want to go to talk to people. I want to get, I just want to make sure I'm not going to show anything. I want to get stacks of business cards that I can, you know, basically say, oh, I need someone, you know, I need someone from the Cade Museum, which, uh, you know, they do like inventing and that kind of thing. Like they, they help people do inventing. So like I need someone at the Cade Museum. Great. I've got that. Maybe I want to work with the Clearwater Aquarium. Right? We're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing some work with the Clearwater Aquarium coming up. This was at an event called Synapse Summit. Clearwater Aquarium was there, and I was feeling particularly volunteering that day. And uh, I wanted to do some work with them because I know they could use some 3D scanning in the work they do with their animals. And so these are companies where it's like, all right, I can help you. I don't mind the extra effort. But the networking that will come of that will be so valuable to a small business. Right? And I get to go hang out in an aquarium. Right? Come on. that That's fun. Um, and when you approach all this stuff with, hey, I would love to be able to help you. And, oh, yeah, by the way, we film or, you know, oh, hey, by the way, we also do this. There is a value that comes to that conversation. When people want to talk to you, you can get so much more value out of it. And so what is the end goal of these networking events, right? The end goal of those networking events is actually one on one meetings. You want to get an individual alone ish right away from the group and talk with them right and if that is at the event where you guys say hey it's too effing loud in here can we go outside talk grab a beer whatever great you can do it right then otherwise it's grab a card follow up set a meeting do it digital if you want do it in person coffee beer whatever know your market right understand that not everyone's going to want to drink I like, like when we go to events that have booze, I like to notate on cards, right? I'm going to cover, I cover things like I will write, oh, focus, please. Thank you. I will write on cards notes about what I actually talked about with them. And I will write if they also had alcohol, because if they had alcohol, they might be more interested in going out to get a drink rather than going out to get coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, and if they're far enough away, I just say, screw it, I'll do it online and not deal with it. But when an introvert can get into that one-on-one -on -one scenario, it's so much more comfortable, especially when you've already established that rapport. Once you have that rapport with somebody, getting to that next step is much easier because it's a friendship now. It's not something that's all that difficult and complicated because it's just a friendship. And if that's all that it is, and that's all the way that you look at it, the business stuff just freaking happens. It's what we love about the business side of it. It just happens. And so following up, right? I suck at this. This is one of the things that I need to do better at, which is following up with people. It, I will forget for like a week, week and a half, which is sometimes okay but the people that know how to follow up properly will follow up 24 to 48 hours after the event and try to get a meeting with you but to me i want to call people right i don't like email i find that email is way too impersonal a phone call i don't have to do it in front of them i can have a script if i want i can use chat gpt to help me you know get through talking points of things that i want to make sure that i mention on this follow-up phone call right and you can even put in the business, assuming their business has been around long enough, ChatGPT will have information to help you communicate with them. Obviously, you might not like phone calls. I see that Mad Cat doesn't. Um, I do because the emotion that can come through via email can often be woefully misunderstood. And as an introvert, I always, I always worry that what I say is going to be taken out of context. It's one of the easiest ways to catch an introvert when they're typing. Will they put parentheses with like a thought bubble in it? Like what they were thinking? That's an introvert because what they're trying to do is provide context to you, the viewer who might not understand that context with the thing. So if you notice that your friends will often put like, they'll have a statement and they'll put parentheses after it um, with a little bit more clarification they're introverted. I, I like that is one of those like key things for introverts. I never find that extroverts do that. 
And if I just told an extrovert how to appear introverted and now they're going to use it to their advantage, I'm going to be upset with this. But I guess technically use that, you know, to whatever grain of salt that you would like. But, dude, to me, I, it seems like a lot of people in the chat do not like phone calls. So I'm a little bit weird in that. I find that I can get a lot farther on the phone, right? With emails, especially if you were given a card to a gatekeeper, I can get through the gatekeeper on the phone. I generally can't easily get through the gatekeeper via, uh, via email. So I don't know. I, I've maybe it's because I am half decent at talking for the most part. Um, it, it, it is, it is simple. Uh, Tarzman says email gives me an audit trail. Well, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, for that type of audit. Yeah. Okay. I like, I get that. Right. I, 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 yeah, I get that. A Mac is introvert or ADHD or neurodiverse, but then again, most neurodiverse people are introverts and have ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I get that. Hi, same. Uh, but yes, if you do work in the IT field or a field that does require audit trails, yes, email works. Um, this is interesting. Like, I didn't realize that I'm I'm kind of, I feel like I'm in the minority for this. Max H agrees with me. Um, who else? Tony D says, I liked it in the old days when we just wrote letters. Yeah, that's life. Um <laughs> I like the phone um, because again, it, I like that communication where I can, I can get a lot more done in a five minute phone call than I can in five emails. Maybe that's because I'm better at talking than I am at writing. And that's why we hire writers. <laughs> we don't hire people to talk for me. Uh, yeah. So that makes sense. And I guess, yes, if you are incredibly busy and you don't have five minutes for a phone call, but you can write an email real quick. That makes sense. So, and certainly there are times where I would prefer to have a written record of communication. Certainly if I am going to do a phone call and we've kind of agreed to follow up, I will immediately when that phone call is done, follow up with an email. This is probably where I should use my CRM more often. I'm learning that I need to use my CRM more often. And uh, I want to get a CRM expert on here, but one that's not going to like try to sell CRMs to talk about how to use one proficiently because i don't know and i think that'd be a really cool business topic for those of you that are looking to start a business because you can use a crm quite well i just have no idea how the hell to do it and introverts right what do we do right we're quality over quantity right that's what introverts do we specialize in quality over quantity don't go don't be overbearing right instead of just trying to meet with as many people as you can, right? You want to be the person that focuses on those high quality connections, right? You are not, you're not shotgun approaching a, a meeting where you're just handing out business cards for the sole purpose of handing out business cards. I want you to go to these networking events or, you know, rep rap festivals, right? I want you to go out there and have your sites trained on those that you want to meet. I will always, I think it was Vermurf last year when I was talking with a dad who was a big fan of our channel and the kid very much didn't care. And the kid pulls on his dad and says, daddy, daddy, it's the 3D printing nerd. And the dad just kind of gives me the look of, and I'm like, I got you. And uh, there was like, there's a bunch of people waiting for Joel and Joel was like in between things. I went up and said, hey, Joel, I got a big fan of yours here. In fact, I was talking to his dad and the kid really wants to meet you. So here, <laughs> and Joel's like, heck yeah, man. It gives, it gives the kid a high five. They take some photos and you know, the dad's like, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, that, that was, that was a really, like, that's a memory that I will have of this industry because you're not always the person that any, that someone wants to talk to. That kid had no desire to talk to me, but love Joel. And that's awesome. And I utilize the fact that I know Joel personally and be like, hey, Joel, here's someone to talk to. Uh, and Joel was totally happy with it. Now, was that the most appropriate thing? I don't know. I still did it anyways, because it's one of those. I know the guy. He had a little bit of time. I jumped over and, uh, you know, made it so the kid could meet Joel real fast, where maybe the kid was going to be a little bit more introverted for it. Although kids, kids are so pure in the fact that they just, they just do things because they want to. There's like no... Uh, 
kids don't really ever have ulterior motives until they get old enough to have ulterior motives. Like six year olds just say things because they want to say things. They're not doing it to hurt somebody. Um, yeah, like, dude, that's, that was the quality over quantity, right? If you are going to an event to talk with a specific vendor, don't be the first person in line, right? But also don't be the last. Maybe be the second or the third or the fourth where, okay, they've been warmed up by somebody else. Now you can have a little bit more of a, you know, quality over quantity. And those that have come up and talked with us, like if you just want to take a photo and leave, great, go ahead, you know. But if you want to come up and have a conversation with me, awesome. But understand, I'm also working at the same time. So I might be able to talk. I might not. I might just say, here's my card. My email's on it. Email me and, uh, you know, we'll set up a chat. Um, I'm always happy to do that with people. I, uh, I never really have a problem with that. Um, I love talking with people, which a lot of you, you know, know about that, but yeah, dude, focus on quality over quantity because quantity is going to make you nervous. Quality is where you actually get to enjoy it. And even better, if a quality connection actually ends up being an extrovert, now you kind of have that that, that lead that you can follow who's going to introduce you to people. Um, I'm going to call out someone in one of my businesses uh, that I'm a part of. His name is Seth. Seth is an extrovert. Seth is one of these people. And it's why I love Seth. Seth will... like I. I at certain times, if I feel comfortable, I, I can be decent at networking. But if I don't feel comfortable in a room... Like I'm surrounded by, I like, if I feel like I'm the dumbest person in the room, I'm really bad at networking. If I'm not the dumbest person, but I'm certainly not the smartest, I'm okay. Um, I'm never all that amazing at networking to be very clear, but I'm also introverted and that's why I'm not the best at it. My buddy, Seth, on the other hand, Seth is so extroverted. It makes me nervous. Okay. But what Seth is uniquely good at, what Seth is uniquely good at is making introductions for people that are around him. And if you're really bad about talking about yourself, talk about somebody else. Give a connection to somebody else. Introduce somebody. And that is when you, that's when all of a sudden now there's a conversation occurring. Now it's not this scary thing because you're introducing somebody else. There's no risk to you because if it doesn't work out, it's not you. It's why a lot of content creators have problems early on with finding sponsors. We have problems finding sponsors because I don't like talking about myself. I don't like doing it. If I had somebody that could do it for us, that's great. Because often you are much better about talking about your friend that might even do the same damn thing that you do than you are about talking about yourself. You can utilize that skill if that friend is with you. It's like having a wing, a wing person, if you will, when you're out trying to find a date. That is what this is about. And if you need to bring a wingman with you, bring him. Have some fun. And go enjoy it. Often if you have a friend with you, whether it's a staff member or just a friend who wants to be there for support, dude, it can make those events so much easier. But if you got to go alone, find someone that you kind of jive with and be like, hey, I'm kind of nervous. You want to you wanna go around and work the room together? Yeah, sure. Great. Now you got a partner in crime. And those partner in crimes are one of the easiest ways to move this in the right direction. Tony says, learn how to do an elevator speech. I am... There is part of me that likes the elevator speech. The idea of an elevator speech is, you know, the ability to talk about what you do and how you do it and the amount of time that it takes an elevator to get from one floor to the next. Normally, that is 15 seconds. So I don't mind elevator speeches, but often people turn elevator speeches into a sales pitch, right? So when people ask, what do we do? I ask them, how detailed do you want? If you want the easy answer, we make stuff. But if you want the detailed answer, I'm happy to go into it. And sometimes they do. Sometimes they're totally cool with we make stuff. And that's great. I'm very happy when all they want is we make stuff. Because it makes my life a little bit easier as well. When we look at the value that having an easy way to describe what you do is, especially if what you do is complicated, right? 
then you get the average person that might be able to open doors for you to make it easy. The way that we do it, this is, this is my icebreaker right here, dude. It's my freaking business card because it's an eighth of an inch thick of wood. We laser cut them. The laser has been one of my best investments that never actually results in real money because it gives people these business cards. And these business cards, I kid you not, I've had people say, you're the guy with the wood business cards. They won't remember what it is that I do. They will remember that I have a wood business card. And damn it, if that's the way that you remember me, then that's the only thing that I care about. Because guess what? The likelihood of you being memorable is pretty low. I am not a very memorable person. I am relatively generic looking. I have a relatively generic voice. Um, and like physically, there's nothing that really stands out about me. Like I'm not, I don't look like Henry Cavill. So I'm not going to be a memorable individual. I don't have my long hair anymore. That, that used to be something that would be somewhat memorable about me. But my business card is very memorable because you don't lose it. And uh, most people won't even put it away. They'll leave it on their desk because it's such an interesting piece. And yeah, there's some time that it takes to make that work. But it is so valuable in that they're incredibly affordable for me to make and they always result in good connections, right? Even if it's something really quick, you know, uh, the Clearwater Aquarium, right? When I first started talking to them, I was talking to some individual, right? I gave them my card. They said, oh, this is a really nice card. Our director of marketing is here and our director of corporate sponsorships is here. Let me get, let me get those two for you because they're going to want to hear what you have to say. I'm not certain if I was going to get to those two people without the business card. Right. The business card was that little cherry on top. Now you can choose whatever little cherry on top that you want. I have certainly seen people do as zombie hedgehog showed me his, his poker chip, his maker chip. Um, and those are nice, but they're very detailed and I'm not certain those are worth the time investment. Right. But if you have a MMU or an AMS or a tool changer or a machine that can do multicolor, doing a printed business card might not be a bad move, especially if you get one of those Ember prototypes plates. You only do a one sided card and on the other side is the textured Ember prototypes plate with your business logo on it in a step and repeat. That is super cool. That would be a really nice business card that you could easily give out. And if you do it right, it should work well. RS makes us that they still have the dolphin with the prosthetic tail. That is Winter. I'm not 100% certain if Winter is still alive. But um, that's what they're known for. They're known for having uh, the, the dolphin with the prosthetic tail. And that was all done with traditional prosthesis. And that was the example that I used. I said, imagine if we took Winter and 3D scanned her. How much easier this process would have been. And you could just tell they're like, Oh man, yeah, that would have been way easy. Cause yeah, it would have been. Another thing, and I know this is hard for people to hear. Cause it, it, it well, it's easy to hear, it's hard to do. Self-care. You need to you need to make sure that you don't overdo it, right? Networking is physically draining for introverts. I think the best way to describe it. What the hell? Oh. The best way to describe it is that introverts start out with, okay, winter passed away November 11th, 2021. Okay. Damn. Well, happens. Um, There's nothing you could do, right? Winter would have died otherwise. They they, they gave winter uh, another chance at life. So, fine. Um, <laughs> Mike says, I am drawing up another Ember prototypes design right now. Are you monitoring my screen again? You know, Mike, I might just be. I might just be. I'm watching chat again because it looks like we're relatively stable. We're not dropping packets at this point, but um, yeah. But dude, making sure that you don't overdo networking, right? Introverts start out with, with like a pile of coins, right? Call it a pile of coins, call it a pile of whatever the hell you want. A pile of dams to give, right? And as you meet people, they each get a coin, right? Extroverts start out with nothing. And they're trying to get as many coins as they can, right? Introverts, if you get rid of all of your coins, you're done. 
And often we will feel as though we need to keep going, but you don't have any more coins to give out. So the quality of your conversations go down and down and down because you're running out of just people time, right? How introverts out there, you're like, I just, I can't people today. And that's okay. It is okay to not be able to people today. Oh, my nose. I think I have like an errant mustache hair that's like itching my nose. I'm sorry. It, it's why you see me keep like itching the top of my nose. I think I have a mustache hair that keeps hitting it. Oh, it's so annoying. I just want to shave it all off, but I don't want to look like I'm 20 again. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like make sure you take breaks, you know? And if that means you just go to the bathroom where it's quiet or you go outside where it's quiet or you go to your car and sit in your car for 20 minutes to just, then do it. That's okay. And make sure that after the event, that you schedule some of that quiet time. For me, I'm weird. After networking events, I will drive home in silence. And that's like the, oh, oh I'm just, I just need to, oh. you know, we just need to get everything, um, back together right that is where you need to find you time because if all you're doing is giving away giving up give it away give it away give it away yeah yeah that's where we were going with that one grant you didn't do a good job on that but if all you're doing is is giving away coins you're never going to refill it for the next time right and yeah it can be draining so if all you can do is stand for 20 minutes inside of a networking event, then make sure that you get to the people you need to get to and then get the frig out. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Do all that you can do. Don't push yourself too far on this because often it can get a little rough. So there are some other things that you can do, right? Networking is also about participating online and going to seminars. Seminars are a great thing for introverts because they're often very bland and dry. Now, they might be interesting, but in terms of like, you know, the hubbub that happens during the seminar, it's not there. It's what happens after, right? Events that are focused can often be incredibly less intimidating than these events that are just open, right? So they provide you a natural way to meet people who are already kind of in that same stage as you. And that is ultimately what we really care about. We want to make those clear, concise, purposeful connections. And to do that, you need to find events where everyone is kind of there for a common purpose. And if that is, let's say it's to learn about a type of 3D printing, right? Good. Then those are going to be the same people that you're not going to have to explain what it is that you do. Either they say, oh, what type of printing do you do? Oh, I do FDM, SLA, MSLA, MJF, CJP, Polyjet, and a few others, right? Or you could say, I do polymer. Great. Hey, I do polymer. Well, oh, I do metals. Oh, dude, I would love to learn more about metals. Great. Now you've got a conversation that you can go to. And this person can be a huge connection for you if you want to start offering metal services within your company. Now, I will tell you, by and large, we don't get a lot of metal services. We might get two to three metal parts a year. But it's also because the average person that actually thinks they need metal doesn't. And polymer would be more than adequate, especially when they find out the cost of metal, because it's really expensive compared to polymer. <laughs> but, you know, if you can easily focus your questions on a way that doesn't really talk about you, but makes it work better for you, then your questions can actually help others get into the mood as well of like jiving and talking and just, I, I, I guess I don't really know the right way to describe this, but it's when you ask a question that is very obviously pointed to somebody in your group that is like, you're giving them the alley-oop that they need to slam dunk this thing, right? Not only do they feel more comfortable that you're helping them out, 
At the same time, it can be something where the group itself can build off of that, right? So having these very easy alley-oop questions, I don't make them too simple, right? But having alley-oop style questions are really, really good, like really useful. And so if you don't want to talk about yourself, ask about people's projects, their challenges, their interests, because people love talking about that kind of stuff. They love it. I can ask pretty much any maker, especially like if you have a maker booth at an event and I ask you about something, right? I ask you about this, you know, cosplay part. They are often so willing to go off onto a tangent about this very specific thing and why they did it and how they did it and why it is meaningful to them. And how all of a sudden that introvert just realized I give a damn. And I'm not just there to film content and move on. I actually really like the things they're doing and I want to talk about it. Use that to your advantage. People often love to talk about themselves. Even introverts can love talking about the work that they do when they realize that others actually find it interesting. Part of the deal for me with being introverted is that I often feel that most people don't find what I do to be fundamentally interesting. Hilariously, most people find the YouTube thing to be way more interesting than the actual work that I do, where, you know, the thing that makes the money. Um, and that's okay. And so I can talk about the YouTube thing, but I can easily swing it into the work that we do and why we do it and why we started YouTube in the first place. So that is where you can build those relationships to allow you to leverage for collaboration and partnerships. Two weeks ago, we talked about community and the value that a community provides and how you can utilize that community. We didn't really talk about how to work that, right? And how networking works for the business side. Because a community is good for a business side, but that's only if you want that social validation and proof. Well, for networking, without that social validation and proof, at least in the small group, you feel as though you're the outcast. How many of you have ever felt like you're the third wheel or the fifth wheel or whatever it is in a conversation where the other people are clearly talking and you just don't feel as though you're being engaged? Now, I would bet the vast majority of you have been into a situation like that before. And if you haven't, then most likely you're the one making somebody else feel that way. I make it a purposeful thing. It's why you see me get distracted with chat. I purposefully make it a point so that everybody that appears to be in this conversation feels a part of the conversation because I know what it feels like to not be a part. And if you're comfortable bringing other people in, bring them in, make them feel a part of it. Because as soon as people feel as though they are being included, they are way more willing to talk to you in a way more meaningful way than they would have in any other scenario. People want to feel cared about. They want to feel as though they provide value. And if all you do is talk about yourself or about this one other person, you ignore the other people that are kind of in this talking group, you're going to look like an asshole and you're going to make other people feel like they don't matter. So engage other people. It's why you see good speakers will look around the room, but they'll take time to make eye contact with people throughout the room that are attempting to make eye contact with them. It's why I try to make more eye contact with the camera rather than looking at chat. Chat is down here, camera's up here. Chat down here, camera up here. And if you see me looking over here, that's where my notes are. So I'm looking for my notes to see the next thing because those notes are important to me to make sure that we have a you know, decent show and my internet actually works. Spectrum. <clears throat> Anyways. When we look at that feeling of, of being included, every one of you have likely been in a situation where you felt included. That feeling of being included is so warming. Be the person that helps make others feel included. Because you'll make friends. You'll make friends that way very, very quickly. Because as soon as people feel as though that they matter and they care, and they always do, but just some people don't always feel that way, especially you introverts. We don't always feel as though that we matter. And having someone bring us into a conversation and it not just be all about them, 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 or them and somebody else, 
dude. Like, it, it feels good, you know? It feels good when you, people bring you in because they want to talk to you, not the other way around. And so that's why having that wingman is valuable to those that maybe wouldn't be so good on their own, right? Um, trying to think, like, what are some good tips and tricks? Like, all right. I mean, I used to do this. I don't really do it anymore because I don't really dress up like that anymore. When I would go to events and need to wear a tie, I had a 3D printed tie clip with gears on it. And the gears moved. I think I got it from Thingiverse. It was a really it was a free design on Thingiverse and I've, I've had them for years. I have them in a few different colors. Um, that is a great little talking point for me because it's a practical 3D print that I can show off. Right then and there, people can look at it. Oh, it spins. I'm like, yep, the gears come off. I can change the colors. And I might even have a gear or two in my suit pocket so I can show them and change it out real quick. There is value to that because all of a sudden they're realizing what can be done with the technology. But now that 3D printing is becoming more mainstream, that's not all that important anymore. And like people will say, oh, 3D Musketeers. Do you do 3D printing? Yeah. Good one. Not everybody actually gets that. And then they might talk about how they have one or their family member has one or their buddy has one. And we could talk a little bit about the technology. I ask them what they do. They talk about what they do. I, I'll ask a question about what they do. And it's a fun thing about being ADHD as well is that you can often have somewhat of an understanding of what somebody does without, you know, really doing it all that much. That's the ADHD problem. It's how, like, we know the a lot about a little kind of thing. That's a very ADHD thing to do. And so when you walk into these situations and can leverage a collaboration immediately, say, hey, I got this buddy. This is what they do. You know, hey, this is so-and-so. This is what they do. If you can connect people, be a connector. Connectors can be introverted. And is a great way for you to have other people introduce you as well. I love connecting people with other people. It is one of the favorite things I get to do on my day-to-day -day job. Where I can say, this is actually not something that we 100% specialize in. But I got a buddy who does this. Let me call him up. Let me bring him in. Let me email him. Let me do a joint email between them. Where everybody can kind of talk together like humans. That is so valuable. And if you have that ability, please do it. Because that connector can build really long-lasting relationships where people will always remember you. And the one that always comes to up for me is Diamondback and E3D. They would have likely found each other, but Diamondback directly credits us, me specifically, with getting them talking with E3D. I don't want the credit for that, to be clear. It's not what I want. I was just the guy that said, you guys should get together and work together. And they did. And now they have a couple of products they work together on. And that's super freaking awesome. I just wanted it because it made sense. And because they're in different countries, it's not always the easiest to communicate. But they were very close to each other. And I was able to bring people over and say, I need the two of you to talk because I need this this matchup to happen. Now we have Diamondback Revos, which are freaking awesome. And I'm always embarrassed when they bring it up. I don't mind it, but I'm embarrassed because one, I don't really like people calling me out like that. It's for a good reason, but it's like, I don't want to be in the limelight, which is funny, says the content creator. But what I prefer is just be able to help people. You know, and if I'm known as the person that can connect you with the right person, then I've done my job, right? If you can come to me and say, hey, I'm trying to get to this person. Do you know anybody? I said, actually, I know them directly. Let me get you in contact. That is so much more important to me because that value is something that people will never forget. That's more than I can do on my own. And if I can do more than what I as one person could do on my own, then I've actually provided real value to the situation. To me, that's what networking is. I know that's not what the traditional networking is to most people, but to me, it's about connecting people 
to their solutions. And if I am that solution, then I'm that solution. If I'm not that solution, then I want to help them find the right person. The goal of what we do is to not always be the end all be all, but minimally, we want to help you kick the can down the road. That's what we want. Mike says, so it's your fault I bought a Diamondback Revo nozzle. It might very well be. But it will be my fault that we get to test the absolute piss out of them soon. I've got some B-stock ones. We're going to be beating the hell out of some Diamondback nozzles real soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Also, I haven't booked the stream yet, but oh god, hopefully my internet's better tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to be cooking live on stream and we're going to be seeing if we can cook a steak with 3d printers so if that's the kind of thing that you want to see join us tomorrow probably going to start around like 1 1 30 somewhere around that time maybe two o'clock and uh, get some steaks cooking because uh, we're going to try to sous vide steaks with 3d printers don't worry i have an actual sous vide as well so we're going to have a control but i've got an idea it in theory should work but why not? And uh, we have fans that are hilarious. Uh, our Discord has known about this for a while. And one of them sent me a chef's hat. So uh, I'm going to wear a chef's hat because I can. Uh, there's a surprise with it too. But yeah. <laughs> David says, why I voided the warranty on my printers, Diamondbacks. Mine have etched many a bill plates without damage. <laughs> Kenneth Sang says, AC bed sous vide. Nope. Chamber heater sous vide. Which is should be better we'll see if we need to use heat bed we will but i hope we don't have to the goal is to use just chamber heaters to see if we can make uh sous vide if for some reason we start to drop temperature and we're not maintaining it we will turn on the heat beds but the goal is to not need to do that we'll see what happens um but yeah that's gonna happen tomorrow which if you're watching or if you're listening audio only that's a week ago sorry that's why i want you to join live live is fun but yeah, come out and watch us uh, try to sous vide steaks, cook steaks with a 3D printer, because that's going to be fun. <laughs> so, again, introverts, what are we really good at doing? Traditionally, introverts are great at problem solving, right? You love solving a good problem. So offer help. Offer help. Advice, I don't know. Advice might not be... One of the best things, if you're not 100% knowledgeable, but say, you know what? I want to help. I don't really know how I can help. So if you can explain to me exactly what's going on and what you guys are doing, I want to help. Okay. Sometimes people are willing, sometimes they're like, nah. Advice can be a difficult one, right? You don't want to feel as though you're boasting about what you do, how you do it, and why you do it. Because that's not networking. That's self-promotion. Networking is about making connections. It's not about closing a sale. And those that go to networking events to close sales, and that's their intention, you're using them for the wrong damn reasons. And you're probably not watching this anyways, because this is networking for introverts. <laughs> go and look to help people solve problems. If you can help people solve problems, then... You provide value, and then they will be willing to pay you to help solve problems. We always say that we as a company, we are professional problem solvers, but more specifically, we are professional storytellers. We help you tell your story. And whether that is we help you put pen on paper for a chapter or two, or we're co-authoring, or even ghostwriting, a book for you as part of your life, then that's what we want to do. Whether you're an inventor, or you're, you know, someone that's got a particular problem, it is all a story that you're working on. It could be a sub chapter in the book of life for you, or it could be a completely separate book because you segment things. It could be any of those, but we are professional problem solvers and storytellers. We're not exactly, you know, 3d printers right? We're not exactly CAD people. We're not exactly content creators. We're not exactly any one thing. 
We're just people that like to help. And if you enter a situation and you're looking at this as I'm just a person who likes to help, you will get so much further than the person that all they want to do is get help. Be the person that provides value, not the one that sucks it out of the room. But I know that I don't have to tell that too much to introverts. Because ultimately, for you as an introvert, all you want to do is make people happy. This is how you do it. Networking events can and will and will forever be scary. Eventually, they get better. Start with ones that are really heavy focus. And if you can't find ones that are, go to events. After parties at events are basically networking events with booze and food. Right? Right? I will say that these rep rap events, you will get way more done the nights after the event than you will during the event because businesses are not there to do deals with you right then and there. Some might be, but the vast majority of them are there to show off what they do. If they want to collab, it's a way more intimate conversation that needs to occur. And that's one that needs to occur when they're not turned no, Grant, that was going to be a way to, weird way to say it. When they're not like, when they don't have their personality on, if you will, right? Those of you that have dealt with content creators after they've done a day of filming know that we are just, we're all kind of just tired and we're drained. That is, that's probably a great time to talk to a content creator, but not the, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's the, dude, I love your videos. Can we talk about some of them? Yeah, dude, sit down. Just having a drink. It's been a long day. You can get to know somebody so much more after an event than you do during it, assuming they go to those after parties. And that's a great way to say, hey, when you're talking to them, hey, I'm going to be at this after party later. Are you going to be going? If so, I would love to connect with you towards the end of it or before you're heading out. That way, it's a little bit quieter. It's way too loud in here, but hey, here's my card. I'd love to talk because I think we could do some really cool stuff together, but I want to make sure that it can be mutually beneficial. As soon as someone tells me I want it to be mutually beneficial, dude, you're, you're speaking my language. You're speaking the language that I want to hear, right? And as an introvert myself, I don't want one-sided conversations. It's why we're looking for a freaking co-host for this stuff and when i can get a co-host i do nero be a great co-host i really gotta follow up with him to see if he wants to be a co-host for this but you know or even have a rolling uh amount of uh co-hosts it'd be fun because i think having the ability to bounce this stuff off of others is really cool I don't know. It is up to you guys. We've been debating on moving away from the business topics for a little bit, go into 3D printing for a little bit again. Um, I, I always try to bring the like the topics around the 3D printing, but I feel like it's really important for us to talk about the business side of it. But apparently I pissed some people off uh, because, oh, it's the same stuff. It's not. There's only been a few episodes that we constantly do over and over and over again. One of them is you don't charge enough. I think another one is you don't value your time. Uh, but I feel like those ones I have to continually pound into people's heads because they're not going to understand it otherwise. Uh, but I'd love to know what you guys want because I enjoy the podcast, but I know when I start to struggle with podcast topics and we're coming up with them like the night before, I'm not always as... I guess, involved as I want to be with it. So love to know your thoughts uh, here in the live chat. But Mike says, rep rap events are mostly just good social events. I don't drive eight to 10 hours, cross an international border and spend a thousand dollars on hotels and fuel just to see the new whiz bang product. I go to talk to folks. Yeah. Jay Lopez says more Victoria. I cannot control that. Uh, she is sleeping in a window right now. She is very happy sunbathing. And uh, I'm not going to get in the way of that. So I'm going to let her do her thing. She comes up every now and then. And in fact, uh, we are going to be releasing a video that will be for Patreon, YouTube channel member, PayPal, all that are paying members only. 
uh, very soon here. It's going to be the first in a series called The Catting Room Floor. A catting room floor is going to be any interaction that I have with a cat that is, you know, when I'm filming. She tends to come up and want attention when I'm filming. Um, and uh, we can't always keep that in the video because it, like, will ruin the pacing. So we're going to do an entire video of cuts from sh from videos. Uh <sighs> Specifically things like uh, Print Fix Friday. Print Fix Friday, we, we normally remove one failure that I look at every week just for timing and pacing. So those go in there, and then any cat interactions will go in there too. So it's going to be uh, the catting room floor is what we're calling it. Uh, so that'll be a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't go bother cats when they're enjoying their time in the sun. I ain't, I ain't getting in the way of that. Cats are solar powered, man. She's recharging her cat batteries. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to hear. I hope this one had some value to it. I know it's it's a little bit... It's a little bit obtuse sometimes. Right? It's... It, 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 it is. It's a little bit obtuse. Um, I, I struggle where... I, uh trying to give the right way to to really describe this right where there's there's more to it um and it's all nuanced so there really isn't a perfect way to do networking if you hate it but part of it is just slowly at a kind of a, a slow you know, a slow pace that makes sense for you one that is comfortable and easy and normal where, all right, if you can only meet with one or two people, do it. Following up with those people are good with resources, right? Don't just be the person that says, Hey, great meeting you. What did we talk about again? Cause I might not remember, um, you know, leverage the collaborations. Like we talked about a couple of weeks back. Um, use your questions, right? Ask good questions that make sense. Right. Um, if you want to have an elevator pitch, you can, but, I'm not a huge fan of the elevator pitch. Um, I don't know. It feels too salesy to me when, I don't know. If I'm not like interviewing you, I don't want your elevator pitch. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you know, look at choosing smaller, more focused events. It's, uh, it's good. I, I, I apparently Duff says hang out with the smokers. That's where you find leads or the dirt. Lots of places of smoking restrictions slash areas. So easy to find. Yeah, but I hate smoking. I hate the, the smell of it. I don't, I don't want to smell like smoke. I don't even like the campfire smoke smell. I, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I, I try to make, I try to clean off my cards after we, after we laser cut them with alcohol and vinegar so that they don't smell like burning. I don't like, I, I do understand though that like, you know, the area where the smokers are, those are the old people that have been doing it for a minute. But you know what? I, I say if you can find a buddy, having a buddy to go to these events with, or even one that, you know, you see all the time at the events so you're like kind of friends, dude, those are so valuable. They're so freaking valuable. But yeah, as Duff says, they're a social aspect. That's true. But yeah, I don't know, guys. Let me know what you want for, for these episodes. I We thought about doing one for like, you know, what has occurred in the past quarter. Because like, you know, we're 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 hitting Q we're hitting Q2 now. Um, you know, tomorrow starts Q2. Um and right? Yeah. Yeah, Q2. Q2 starts next month. Um Maybe that's what we do next week. I I, guess I I don't really pay a ton of attention to the consumer industry all that well because it's so hard to follow because companies are teasing things, then things break, and then things don't work. And it's, I don't know, man. I don't know. But I do want to find a... Uh, I want to find a co-host. My goal for April is that by the end of April, we have a co-host. Um, that we can do these episodes with or minimally that we find a group of people that are cool with doing like one episode every two months. Right. And we have like, you know, seven to eight people that, you know, we have on all the time. So 
I would love to know your all's thoughts. Let me know. Otherwise, I think this might be a good place to stop. And of course, my internet is now finally working again. Ugh. I hate when my internet goes bad. Like, I really do. Because there's nothing that I can do to control it. So. Yeah. Jesse Northcutt says, and you, my friend, are an extrovert introvert. That's correct. I am. Um, I am. Jesse, you did get my email, right? Hopefully you did. If not, text me. Um, yeah, I was cool with you guys using the NDA. I just want credit for it. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I, I am an extroverted introvert, right? I can be extroverted if I need to be, but my preference is not to be. Um, what was it with Amber? What were we doing? Where I was like, all right, I'm done. I, I've had too much people. She's like, oh my gosh, me too. And we left. Amber can sometimes be my, my, my wingman. But I do like to have industry focused wingman from time to time too. Amber is good because she can talk about stuff that people always find interesting. Nursing, for some reason, everybody finds interesting. But then they always ask the, the question they don't really want the answer for, which is what is the weirdest thing you've seen? They don't, they really don't want the answer to that. So you got to have answers that, uh, that fit, that fit what they want to hear, not what the actual answer is. Anybody that works in the medical field understands that. But yeah, guys, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm feeling kind of, look, this is, this is like my introverted thing coming back to me. Like, I feel like I didn't answer this to the extent that I wanted to answer it, but I'm not certain there's a one size fits all answer to this. Right? Like, you, you have likely been networking way more than you think. Right? When you tell people, hey, go check out this channel. Hey, go watch Steve Builds, who we're going to be, uh, what, as soon as we're done streaming, we're going to push everybody into Steve Builds' channel, who is uh, streaming on his Rook, I think, with his, uh, with his Rook. By the way, uh, when we all go into Steve's bill, uh, into Steve Build's channel, um, harass him for like one message. Okay, just be like, oh, it's raining. It's three D Musketeers raining. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We just, I don't know. Just at Steve Builds or something. I don't know. It, it is. It's fun to make fun of Steve real quick. Because remember, if you're dealing with the Voron problem, always blame Steve. It's always Steve's fault. I refuse to accept the fact that I did something wrong, and it's always Steve's fault. And if you don't get that joke, then you aren't watching our Voron build stream, which will once again be occurring on Wednesday. We are doing it every single week up till Rocky Mountain Rep Rep because I need to get this stupid thing done before we get there. Um, so, yeah. Thomas says, I believe in Steve. Um, oh, oh, Amber's bringing the cat over here. Watch out. Here's the cat. A little more, Amber. Bring her in a little more. There she is. Look, you guys get the cat today. See? So it's now, now it's a good stream. Hello, Mrs. Kitty. Oh, she was sleeping. She looks so sleepy. She is not happy. She is so sleepy. Oh, you picked her. I can feel that she's warm. Was she in the window? <laughs> you, picked, you, you did the one thing I said we weren't going to do. She was in the window. Huh? She wasn't in the window. Oh, well, then she's very warm. <laughs> Thomas says now the stream is complete. Boss is on the set. Yeah, yeah, cat's here. Cat's here. Watch, she's gonna now walk directly across and then jump down because she she wants to go back to sleeping. Thank you for for gift for 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 gifting everybody your presence. I I know it was against your will and you just wanted to be sleeping. Do get a churu, it'll be yeah, we're gonna give her a churu. Oh, is that? Thanks, Megan. Yeah. What a good baby. All right. I guess we're going to have to end it here because, uh, yeah, the cat's here, which means clearly that, 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 that's the, uh, that's the cane handle pulling me off the set. Anyways, guys, this has been 181 episode of the making awesome podcast. It's it. It was a weird one. I'm sorry. I hope that I answered your questions. And if not, leave them in the chat, uh, leave them in the comments. Hope everybody has a great day today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. It is Easter after all, regardless if you celebrate it, call your loved ones, damn it. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.